billionaire China investor Ray Dalio came under fire for controversial comments he made earlier this week, saying we have our own human rights issues here in the U.S., and that the CCP is just behaving like a, quote, strict parent. Jack Howe asked Dalio about that earlier. There was a backlash this past week to some comments you made. You have a new fund in China. You were asked about human rights there, including the, the disappearance from public life of the, the tennis player Peng Shui. And some of the comments struck some listeners as jarring. You, you said you thought China was behaving like a strict parent. Some people thought you, you were equating human rights concerns in China with those in the U.S. So I want to give you an opportunity now. Give me, tell me what you what you meant by those comments. What's the role of a money manager putting work to China in assessing human rights, and what's your assessment? Well, thank you, thank you for letting me clarify this. Um, a lot of misunderstanding. I, uh, <clears throat> you know, get thrown a question, and I'm trying to answer the question in the most straightforward way. Um, and uh, just let me be clear that um, I really think I at that spontaneous moment did not make clear. So, let, uh, first of all, um, this issue, this human rights issue, uh, is obviously a big issue. And I was not meaning to su suggest that they are operating in a way that is the same as we are operating way in dealing with those things. I was not meaning to equate those things. Uh, on the question of being asked about, quote, the strict parent, this was not my intention. I wasn't making that statement. I was intending to convey a statement that was made to me by a policymaker um, and in order to try to get, pass along understanding. I wasn't commenting on what, what I thought about the strict parent. I was commenting on what's autocratic and what's uh, democratic and the two different approaches. Um, and uh, on this issue, I think um, I don't want to minimize that issue. That is an important issue. And I want to also de describe that as an American who um, knows the differences between these two countries, I've spent all of my life here and also about half of my life going to China. And I find myself in the middle of those two things. And I'm deeply concerned about war, about the conflict between these two ideologies or these two types of approaches, because I think that there is a risk of that. And so being in that position, I want to uh, try to help that understanding. And I did a lousy job of conveying that. This is a situation which is faced by something like 40,000 investors and hundreds of thousands of banks, uh, businesses, and so on that are American businesses that are operating there, they face the same question that we're dealing with. And that's a difficult question of how to approach that. And when we're trying to balance those things, we also realize that if there's disengagement, um, what that would be like um, for the society and so on. Tell, tell me about risk and returns. You've been investing in China for so long. How have the risks changed? Are, are there risks added to by the kinds of things we're talking about now? And are, how do the opportunities for returns that you see there, how do they compare with what you've seen in decades past? Well, in decades past, they, we didn't have the market choices that we have now. I mean, since I started going there, per capita incomes increased by 26 times. The the economy would have is gone great, and then you see the investments of the businesses, different businesses. They've developed capital markets, the second largest capital markets in the world. So now the opportunities to be able to invest are just really largely opening up. And um, yeah, and I think that they're attractive for reasons we can get into. But I also think diversification is important in this kind of an environment. So when I think of the U.S. markets or I think of any markets, I'm in 40 countries, something like 40 countries. When I think about that, I have to think about diversification, particularly given the competition that's going on. I was going to ask you if, if, if you feel you can trust the government there putting so much money to work. But, I, you know, maybe you're saying with that level of diversification, it's about, uh, you know, staying safe by spreading the money around. Well, uh, uh, OK, let <laughs> Let me get to what I'm trying to get to is the issues that we're really dealing with in terms of the issues of war and the uh, right. conflicts, right? 
So um, um, I think that, um, like a lot of countries, there are a lot of risks that are existing in China and exist in the United States. And that combination of those risks are something that I'm trying to communicate clearly here in order to understand what that diversification tell, looks like. Tell me what's behind the book. The book is called Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order, Why Nations Succeed and Fail. What, was, uh, what were your thoughts behind writing this book? There were three big things that happening in my lifetime, happening now, that never happened in my lifetime or our lifetimes before that happened many times in history. Those three things are financial, um, in other words, spending a lot more money than we are earning and creating a lot of debt, which is then being monetized, and it works its way through the system to produce the types of results that we're having. It causes good services, financial assets, prices all to go up, produces a type of inflation and that event. The second is the internal conflict. The um, combination of wealth gaps, political gaps, the left and the right, is having a conflict, a level of conflict, that is the highest since 1900. And the third is the rise of a big, great power to challenge the existing power and the existing world order, and that conflict. Those three things have not happened since the 1930 to 45 period, and I've learned in history that I need to understand that pattern. By studying, for example, the Great Depression, I was able to anticipate, we were able to anticipate the 2008 financial crisis. You write about what you see as a 30% chance of civil war in the U.S. over the next decade, which is alarming. What, what do you mean by civil war? What would cause that? And, and what should we do to prepare for that? Not just as investors, I suppose, but as citizens. Well. When the causes that people are behind are more important than the system, the system's in jeopardy. That's shown in repeatedly in history. And so the, if we really take the elections and we take the splits that are taking place now, there is a question um, and a likelihood that we will go to higher and higher levels of polarity in which neither side is going to give up losing that they'll operate in a certain way that would be um, at risk. I think we're seeing that shift in values, the shift, in the conflict in values, causing movements to different states, um, not just taxation. And those, there's a tendency, history shows, for those who are similar, the, the rich going down to some place, the poor going that, the, ha the ho hollowing out of a, of a location financially as the tax base goes, intensifying those conflicts. So I think that that type of a conflict is at risk. I do think that... You mean a metaphor civil war or you mean an actual armed conflict? I, I, um, no, I don't think that we're going to have an armed conflict, but I do think you're going to have a power um, decision-making, not decision-making when there's going to be following the legal system exactly. For example, when the federal government is going to mandate something where the state and local governments are going to have to do things, I think there'll be an argument as to who has what power. And when they have that kind of argument, that starts to begin to produce a type of internal conflict that makes the place dysfunctional. And what we have to do, above all else, three things that need to be successful. First, you have to earn more money than you spend, and you have to be productive. Second, you have to be able to work well together in a bipartisan way, in a middle kind of way, that's good for the whole country. If you don't make it good for the whole country, it won't work. And the third is that you have to deal with the external conflict. Our thanks to Ray Dalio.